come on! Welcome everybody, this is Ed with another review from the Broken Controller Club. Now, I love cyberpunk stuff. I know that's not exactly unique these days, thanks to the recent love affair with all things synthwave and 80s, but I remember seeing Blade Runner for the first time a few decades ago, I don't even think I was a teenager yet, and thinking it was amazing looking. As I got older, I realized there was a lot more to the movie than just looks, but regardless, it was a world I was really interested in, and it was a stark contrast to the bright and optimistic flash of other shows and movies back in the 80s. Before the previous generation of consoles, there was actually a good amount of cyberpunk games released, and what was there was really special. I won't name everything here for time, but you had everything from RPGs like Shadowrun to semi-open world strategy games like Syndicate, and later on Deus Ex, Beneath a Steel Sky, and an actual Blade Runner PC game that's pretty well worth trying out. The popularity of Cyberpunk seemed to explode, though, during this past generation of consoles with Cyberpunk 2077's launch, if you want to call spectacularly f***ing the bed with reckless abandon a launch, being something of a milestone for its popularity. All of that long-windedness leads us to today's game, The Ascent, a Cyberpunk RPG released a few days ago that doesn't really pretend to reinvent the wheel, and as far as I can tell, they just want to provide an entertaining experience. In my early impressions a few days back, I thought the combat was fun, and I really liked the graphics and world that the game takes place in, and while my opinion is a little more mixed than it previously was last weekend, overall I really like what's here. You create and play as a character known as an indent, short for indentured, and someone who is basically enslaved by a corporation in this dystopian world called Velus. The ruling corporation called Google, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the Ascent Group, collapsed and this set rival corporations and factions against each other for control. You're basically in the middle of all of it, trying to figure out what the hell happened and hopefully survive this show. It's an action RPG, kind of like Diablo with dual stick combat. If you're familiar with those, then you know what that means. Lots of circle strafing and shooting with the occasional popping of special abilities and items. Now, if I sound condescending, I really don't mean to be because no matter how many times I've played games like this, I still really enjoy them. That just happens to be the main strategy when I play them, and it's as familiar and comfortable as your favorite pair of jammy pants and a brand new pair of socks. Doesn't that sound nice right now? I love new socks. Anyways, as many cyberpunk settings go, expect more neon than a Vice City nightclub in the 80s and a ton of humans and mutants sporting the very finest in cybernetic enhancements and accessories. The world itself is gorgeous, especially from the mostly isometric view the game gives you. Shops, bars, flying vehicles buzzing by, they all make the world feel alive, and the only place you'll find more NPCs is on Twitter. As one would expect in a world like this, the bottom levels are slums covered in garbage, drunks are asleep on curbs, and I notice people beating each other up in alleys or begging for drugs. So basically this game will feel immediately familiar to anybody who's lived in or visited Detroit. The quality of life gets noticeably better the higher you um, ascend, for the lack of a better word, with fancy nightclubs and pristine white architecture, things like that. And while the game looks great, I did notice a few things. First is that when you do occasionally get a close-up of characters, they're not very detailed up close. You'll actually want the camera to pull away after a while because everybody looks so much sharper that way. That said, you'll definitely notice when you shoot someone and they explode in a shower of limbs or catch fire or get vaporized as the particle effects look really good. Also, a lot of the parts of the city tend to look a lot alike after a while, and when discovering a new area, I'd laugh to myself because it looked just like the one I came from. That said, the game does feel huge, and you can fast travel by taxi or train to get around. I do want to note that on the Xbox Series X, load times were really fast, like a few seconds, opposed to the Xbox One where I'm told they're slower than frozen molasses. The combat is fun, but can be frustrating at times. Some bosses feel like they're meant to be fought in multiplayer, even after figuring out their weaknesses, and I die a dozen times or so fighting them. These are large bosses, and in several of the fights, you're really limited at where you can move, and when they're making a beeline right for you, and you've got a cooldown between dodges, you're gonna die a lot. You keep your XP when you die though, and you respawn at your checkpoint, so more often than not, I could cheese the XP amount enough to level up, and that would usually help me beat them after a while. It still felt like a little bit of a grind though. Also not helping is the fact that the enemies have a habit of attacking from off-screen, so expect to spray and pray at times. 
fights happen just about anywhere you go, so you could be walking through a shopping district and out of nowhere some mutants or Yakuza would show up with their swords and machine guns like their Lo Wang from Shadow Warrior and suddenly you've got half your health and people are running screaming everywhere while you're all shooting at everybody. That is honestly when the game's at its best though. There's a mission that takes you to a nightclub and the same thing happens, but this time the area was so crowded that you couldn't help but mow down all the innocent people in your path so you could actually get to the bad guys. It was like a really sloppy version of the nightclub fight scene in Collateral. Your weapons range from pistols to machine guns, shotguns, rocket launchers, and for some reason a sniper rifle. Why they included a precision rifle that you can't aim down a scope with is beyond me in this, especially with the camera issue I just mentioned. Also, a lot of times my guns felt underpowered. Thankfully, you've got augments that grant you special powers in combat, and they're actually pretty cool too. You can do a flaming punch or spawn a bunch of enemy-seeking spiders that explode on contact or slow down bullets in a stasis field around you and lots more. If you've exhausted all that, then you also have a dumb little grenade that you can occasionally use, though those didn't really feel as effective as I'd hoped until you finally pick one up that heals you. So in addition to the normal RPG leveling up and equipping augments, you can also upgrade your weapons with components you'll find throughout the game, and you can buy and sell armor. While everybody else in this game has that cyberpunk look about them that we're all familiar with, your character more often than not looks kind of doofy. There's some variety in the clothing, but like for the majority of the game, my guy looked like one of those 40 year olds you'd see at Walmart in basketball shorts and a tank top and sunglasses who's still trying to look like he's 20. Most of the game's speech is voiced, and some of it is in English, and some of it is in some <laughs> mutant gibberish, I think. Maybe it actually is in a different foreign language. I couldn't tell. They all sound like gibberish to me. The rest of it, though, is just gunfire and ambient futuristic noises to accompany the synthwave soundtrack, which is really good, whether you're just running from place to place or blowing up enemies with gunfire. Like, when the music starts and it's got that kind of thumping bass, it's pretty fun and easy to get into the game at that point. So as far as the meat of the game goes, there's over 30 missions total in the game if you're counting main and side missions together. During that time, you're going to do a bunch of running around, and as I said earlier that the locations could feel pretty similar after a while, some of the missions early on tended to drag a bit, and that's going to turn people off. And that's a shame, because this is a fun game. In particular, one mission felt stupidly long and ended in a boss fight with a mech that kicked my ass in on several attempts. The game kept a much better pace after that, though I can't really say that the story itself was really all that exciting by the end. As for multiplayer, I tried hosting online co-op games, but nobody joined, so I enlisted fellow club member Adam over at Broken Clutch Motorsport on Twitch to create a co-op game with me. The game was a little janky despite us both being on wired connections, though he was playing on an Xbox One and I'm on the Series X, so I don't know if that had anything to do with it. Uh, but it turns out that there's no level scaling when you're playing with other people, so keep that in mind if you're playing with someone who's like level 2 and you're level 20 or you know something considerably higher, because your friend who's the lower level is probably going to get their ass kicked in. I didn't have anybody to play couch co-op with me, so that didn't happen for this review. So at the end of the day, if you're into cyberpunk settings, action RPGs, and any of the footage here looks interesting to you, then honestly I'd say to give it a shot, especially if you've got Xbox Game Pass since it's free on there right now. It did drag in a few spots early on, but the combat is fun and there's enough here to mess around with and enjoy yourself, and it's a good looking game with a great synthwave soundtrack. Also, this game was made by under a dozen people, which in my opinion is pretty damn impressive given everything that this has got going on. Better than what I could make, that's for sure. Anyways, that's all the news that's fit to print for this review. I got more around the corner in Bad Game Summer has a little bit of gas left in the tank before that misery comes to an end. So do me a solid and subscribe, and we're going to do this again soon. Congratulations! You're one of an elite few to make it to the end of the video. Reward yourself by hitting the round subscribe button in the middle, and then check out the other goodies I've got in the links next to it.